What's up guys, welcome to Sport Day, my name is Giovanni and welcome to a Kiev versus Napoli review for the Champions League. So I know this is a late review, before I, I start, for all of you that are looking for highlights, just as I always say, this is a video without highlights, as of right now I, I'm not going to put them, I just don't have time to you know, go and edit the video as much and I don't want to get copyright right, right, you know, right now. So it's just going to be a quick review, um, this one is a delayed review, um, it's already the day after, very late, everyone knows what happened, but I still gotta make a video, that's the point of my channel, and I just wanna talk about it. Um, so, actually, I only got to see the first half myself, but my friend filled me in, um, but we're just gonna go and give it a rundown. So, the first half, what I saw, the first 15 minutes or so, we did pretty well. I think, you know, um, we, we tried to, to create some chances, you know, we didn't get anything, you know, clear cut though, that really saw us, you know, scoring a goal. We we really lacked uh, the touch in the final third. I, I thought you know we we always we kept going up getting up there getting up the field and just lacking that one pass um, that could lead to a finish. So we didn't get any clear cut chances. Then after that it really started going downhill. Um, we conceded in the 26th minute to Garmash. Um, it all got started from Yarmolenko. You know whipped the ball in and then um, Kiev's player was unmarked all the way um, across across the box, unmarked, heads it back into the box, um, and um, Garmash puts it away with, you know, somewhat of a really nice finish, actually. It just, um, it was due to a defensive mistake, though. It's not like one of those goals where you couldn't have stopped it. Um, you know, a player was unmarked, the ball ended up, you know, getting headed back to Garmash, who puts it away past Reyna. Um, so I don't know if, you know, Reyna could have come out or did something with that, but a defender definitely left him unmarked. Um, and then, and then we went down 1-0, and it was looking a little bad for us because we weren't playing well around that time. Um, but after that goal, you know, around the 30-minute mark, we really started to wake up, and we, we got back into it, and we tied it through Adek Milik, who scored his first Champions League goal for Napoli. That was his third goal overall at that time to tie it on a beautiful, beautiful assist by Fauzi Goulam. Um, you know, he has his days where his crosses are absolute just, just poor, you know, very poor crosses. But sometimes they're lasers and... They're just served very well, and this one was served right on top of the head of, right to the head of Adik Milik, and he puts it away with a beautiful header to tie the game at 1-1. And you know, at that point, it was looking good. Um, you're away at a very hostile environment in uh, in Kiev, so you just want to at least get a point. You don't want to lose the game, especially because it's Champions League. Um, but yeah, and then seven minutes later, or six minutes later, however you want to say it, 42nd minute, I believe it is, the second minute of, of, of uh, stoppage time, um, Milik scored again uh, on another header. Um, Napoli kept pushing up front. You know, after that that first goal, after they conceded, they really did wake up a bit. Um, they, they pushed up, and he scored another header. This one, a little bit more bizarre looking. Um, you know, this, this assist, I believe, was off Mertens. Um, Milik, again, tries to head it in. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's saved, and then it ricochets back to him, and, you know, he, he, he puts it in with his head. It was just very awkward. It was like the second header was very weak, but no one was covering the the, the net, so it, it snuck its way in there. Um, well placed, and he has two goals, so four overall for Napoli, but two, most importantly, two Champions League goals. Um, and that second goal actually ended up being the winner, because the match actually ended 2-1. Um, so I got to see the first half. I got to see all the goals. Um, the second half, I didn't get to see, but my friend filled me in. Um, and these are his thoughts. This is Daniel. Again, check out SSCN America on Twitter. Um, it's our page. We just, everything English um, for Napoli, for all of you who don't speak Italian. And our, our Napoli fans, you can go on there and, um, you know, get our news, um, thoughts, recaps, things like that. So he was just telling me how um, in the second half, he really thought we were in the driver's seat at first. Um, we kept the ball most of the time. We played better in the second half, I think, than we did in the first half. Um, but more possession to Kiev. Obviously, they're at home. That's kind of expected. It kind of like evened out towards the end. Um, they didn't really get anything too dangerous that, that looked like you know they would score. But in the second half, um, Kulibali was an absolute tank, according to my friend. Um, he shut down Yarmolenko every every time he got near him on the, on, on the edge right there. Um, he was just very good at defending and just... He played. He, he played to his usual self. This this is the coolie bully we like to see, um, and he was able to shut down his side of the field, his part of the field, especially Yarmolenko, who was a deadly weapon for Kiev, um, and he was able to shut them down. And then Jorginho was also very impressive, according to my friend. Um, a, a, a stat right here is 103 out of 109 passes. He's a very underrated midfielder, Jorginho. You know, because he's not that fast. Um, he he doesn't dazzle in the offense. You know, he can lead the offense in like you know passing and setting up the play. 
Um, but he doesn't score goals. He, you know, you don't really see that many assists from him. So he he goes under the radar. But he's so important, and he's one of the best, you know, midfielders at his age, right? Or you know, one of the youngest, mid, best young midfielders, I would say, because he's still pretty young. Um, so he he just is very underrated, and I'm so glad he's on Napoli. He played very well, very very well in the second half. Um, but we did get sloppy towards a part of the second half. Um, they didn't have any clear cut ch uh, chances um, where they should have scored. Um, but we, we kept them at bay and we, we just saw the game out after being up 2-1 because that's what you want to do, get a point or a win. Obviously, you want three points, but you're away, like I mentioned before. Um, so it was a solid performance. It wasn't the usual dominant Napoli. Like when Napoli's on, it wasn't Napoli who will crush somebody 4-0, 5-0 um, or, you know, that has 25 chances during the game. That's definitely not what it was. Um, but you could tell that they, they came to get a result and they got the result by winning 2-1. Um, again, great goals by Milik, you know, great performance by him, solid overall. Could have been a lot better, you know, but it's a, it's enough for a win and a win is a win. That's what you say and that's how you take it. So, you know, that was a quick review. I know it's like a little over the place. I'm sorry, guys, but I only got to see one half. I got I had school and, you know, I had to go off what my friend told me and things like that. So maybe we don't even see eye to eye, but... Um, Oh, we're both Napoli fans, and that's what it what it comes together as a good performance, a, a good enough performance from Napoli to win. So we we're at home in the next match. We got to take care of business. Um, you know, another three points would be very good. Benfica and uh, Beskitas. I hope I said that right, but the Turkish club. You know, um, they tied one one last game, so you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, but before I end this video, also want to give a shout out to the Sempre podcast. Go check them out on. Um, on Twitter and listen to their podcast. Awesome stuff. My friend James and Darren as well. Um, always got to shout them out and, and they continue to support us and you guys really need to support them as well. If you like our Twitter page or you like this channel, you're, you're going to like their podcast. Everything Napoli, genuine reactions from them. It's actually quite entertaining. So please go check that out again, you know, follow the Twitter page and please do subscribe to the channel. I'm 10 subscribers away guys. So please get me to 500. That'd be great. Um, and as always, we're looking forward to the game on Saturday, I believe against Bologna. So we'll see how that goes. I'll be here for a review on that full review. Um, I'll try to get some highlights, hopefully. So we'll see. Thank you guys very much. Forza Napoli sempre. Ciao.